Chapter 36, The Sunday Cab. One morning, as Jerry had just put me into the shafts and was fastening the traces, a gentleman walked into the yard. Your servant, sir, said Jerry. Good morning, Mr. Barker, said the gentleman. I should be glad to make some arrangements with you for taking Mrs. Briggs regularly to church on Sunday morning. We go to the new church now, and that is rather further than she can walk. Thank you, sir said Jerry, but I have only taken out a six-day license, and therefore I could not take a fare on a Sunday. It would not be legal. Note, a few years since the annual charge for cab licenses was very much reduced, and the difference between the six and seven days cabs was abolished. Oh, said the other, I did not know yours was a six-day cab, but of course it would be very easy to alter your license. I would see that you did not lose by it. The fact is, Mrs. Briggs very much prefers you to drive her. I should be glad to oblige the lady, sir, but I had a seven days license once, and the work was too hard for me and too hard for my horses. Year in and year out, not a day's rest, and never a Sunday. With my wife and children, and never able to go to a place of worship, which I had always been used to do before I took to the driving box. So for the last five years, I have only taken a six days license and I find it better all the way around. Well, of course, replied Mr. Briggs, it is very proper that every person should have rest and be able to go to church on Sundays. But I should have thought you would not have minded such a short distance for the horse and only once a day, you would have all the afternoon and evening for yourself and we are very good customers, you know. Yes, sir, that is true. And I am grateful for all favors, I am sure. And anything that I could do to oblige you or the lady, I should be proud and happy to do. But I can't give up my Sunday, sir. Indeed, I can't. I read that God made man, and he made horses and all the other beasts. And as soon as he had made them, he made a day of rest and bade that all should rest one day in seven. And I think, sir, he must have known what was good for them. And I am sure it is good for me. I am stronger and healthier altogether now that I have a day of rest. The horses are fresh too and do not wear up nearly so fast. The six day drivers all tell me the same and I have laid by more money in the savings bank than I ever did before. And as for the wife and children, sir, my heart alive, they would not go back to the seven days for all they could see. Oh, very well, said the gentleman. Don't trouble yourself, Mr. Barker, any further. I will inquire somewhere else and he walked away. Well, says Jerry to me, you can't help it, Jack, old boy. We must have our Sundays. Polly, he shouted, Polly, come here. She was there in a minute. What is it all about, Jerry? Why, my dear, Mr. Briggs wants me to take Mrs. Briggs to church every Sunday morning. I say, I have only a six days license. He says, get a seven days license and I'll make it worth your while. And you know, Polly, they are very good customers to us. Mrs. B often goes out shopping for hours or making calls, and then she pays down fare and honorable like a lady. There's no beaten down or making three hours into two hours and a half as some folks do. And it is easy work for the horses, not like tearing along to catch trains for people that are always a quarter of an hour too late. And if I don't oblige her in this matter, it is very likely we shall lose them altogether. What do you say, little woman? I say... Jerry, says she, speaking very slowly, I say, if Mrs. Briggs would give you a sovereign every Sunday morning, I would not have you a seven days cabinet again. We have known what it was to have no Sundays, and now we know what it is to call them our own. Thank God you earn enough to keep us through it, though it's sometimes close work to pay for all the oats and hay, the license and the rent beside, but Harry will soon be earning something, and I would... Rather struggle on harder than we do than go back to those horrid times when you had hardly a minute to look at your own children, and we never could go to a place of worship together or have a happy, quiet day. God forbid that we should ever turn back to those times. That's what I say, Jerry. And that is just what I told Mr. Briggs, my dear, said Jerry, and what I mean to stick to, too. So don't go and fret yourself, Polly for she had begun to cry. I would not go back to the old times if I earned twice as much so that it's settled, little woman. Now cheer up and I'll be off to the stand. Three weeks had passed away after this conversation and no order had come from Mrs. Briggs. So there was nothing but taking jobs from the stand. Jerry took it to heart a good deal for of course the work was harder for horse and man. 
but polly would always cheer him up and say never mind father never mind do your best and leave the rest twill all come right some day or night it soon became known that jerry had lost his best customer and for what reason most of the men said he was a fool but two or three took his part if working men don't stick to their sunday said truman they'll soon have none left it is every man's right and every beast's right by god's law we have a day of rest and by the law of england we have a day of rest and i say we ought to hold to the rights these laws give us and keep them for our children all very well for you religious chaps to talk so said larry but i'll turn a shilling when i can i don't believe in religion for i don't see that your religious people are any better than the rest if they are not better put in jerry it is because they are not religious you might as well say that our country's laws are not good because some people break them if a man gives way to his temper and speaks evil of his neighbor and does not pay his debts he is not religious i don't care how much he goes to church if some men are shams and humbugs that does not make religion untrue real religion is the best and the truest thing in the world and the only thing that can make a man really happy or make the world any better if religion was good for anything said jones it would prevent your religious people from making us work on sundays as you know many of them do and that's why i say religion is nothing but a sham why if it was not for the church and chapel goers it would be hardly worthwhile our coming out on a sunday but they have their privileges as they call them and i go without i shall expect them to answer for my soul if i can't get a chance of saving it several of the men applauded this till jerry said that may sound well enough but it won't do every man must look after his own soul you can't lay it down at another man's door like a foundling and expect him to take care of it and don't you see if you are always sitting on your box waiting for a fare they will say if we don't take him someone else will and if he does not look for any sunday of course they don't go to the bottom of it where they could see if they never came for a cab it would be no use your standing there but people don't always like to go to the bottom of things it may not be convenient to do it but if you sunday drivers would all strike for a day of rest the thing would be done and what would all the good people do if they could not get to their favorite preacher said larry tis not for me to lay down plans for other people said jerry but if they can't walk so far they can go to what is near and if it should rain they can put on their mackintoshes as they do on a weekday if a thing is right it can be done and if it is wrong it can be done without and a good man will find a way and that is as true for us cabmen as it is for the churchgoers <laughs>